I'm here to announce the completion of our withdrawal from Afghanistan and the end of the military mission. The longest war in United States history comes to an end as the last U.S. soldier, you see him there, departs from Afghanistan. We had a few strong storms this evening, and we are also tracking Ida and what that could bring up for us here for Wednesday. Coming up. Central Virginia offers relief. I'm breaking down several local efforts underway right now to help in Louisiana. That story coming up in a live report. NBC 12 News at 11 starts now. We begin with a live look at Tropical Depression Ida tonight. The storm's wrath leaving millions without power, homes and businesses destroyed, and at least two people dead in Louisiana. We have live team coverage for you tonight. Brent Solomon out live with the latest on relief efforts as Virginians step up to the challenge. And Megan Wise has you covered as that storm weakens but remains dangerous as it makes its way to Virginia. In the meantime, we'll have all that coverage in just a moment. But ahead of Ida's arrival here in Virginia, we had some pretty intense rain roll through our area. Look at this. This tree came crashing down in Chesterfield. This was on Ashbrook Parkway just off of Hall Street. It happened earlier tonight. And we've also had some reports of localized flooding in Richmond. This video from an NBC 12 viewer shows how it looked merging onto I-195 near West Broad. Meteorologist Megan Wise has been busy tracking all of this rain all evening. It's calmed down significantly, hasn't it? It has. It's a much quieter picture where that activity is now pushed towards us down in the southeastern corner of our state. And there was a severe thunderstorm warning up until just recently, but uh, things are a lot quieter, much weaker, but still seeing a decent amount of rain moving through Hampton Roads, Newport News, and a lot of lightning out towards the water at this point. But take a look at all the storm reports just from earlier this evening. You can see started up towards Louisa County through Goochland County and down towards Dinwiddie. Whitty County, but the most activity certainly felt in Chesterfield County, where we have a lot of down tree reports and even some flooding as well in South Richmond. Temperature wise, we are a whole lot cooler thanks to that rain cooled air, low 70s, Hanover through the city of Richmond, Petersburg's at 72 degrees. We have upper 60s back towards Louisa. And as we take a look at what's going on with Ida, the latest advisor just came out at the top of the hour. Still a depression, and winds are still the same as earlier this evening. It's still 35 mile per hour storm. You can see the center here making its way towards the northern part of Mississippi, still dumping a lot of heavy rain towards North Alabama and up towards West Tennessee. It'll move towards the northeast at about 10 miles per hour, so that takes it through Tennessee throughout the day tomorrow, bringing them heavy amounts of rain. And then as we go into the day on Wednesday, notice the track is to our north. And that's where the heaviest rain is going to set up throughout to Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon, you'll see moderate to heavy rain just dumping up towards West Virginia and up towards the northern part of our state. But where that leaves us, just to the south of this track, we are going to be watching for strong to severe storms. So I'll walk you through the latest on what we expect for Wednesday's first alert weather day. And also we'll take a look at tomorrow's forecast here in just a little bit. Mickey, Kurt. All right, we will check back. Thank you, Meg. To the Gulf Coast now, where Ida may have moved on quickly, but the impact of this Category 4 hurricane will be felt for a very long time. More than a million people are without power, and the death toll stands at two, but is it only expected to climb. Tonight, Liz McLaughlin reports from New Orleans, where cleanup is on the back burner, as the focus tonight is on saving lives. A massive rescue operation underway across Louisiana. It was the worst thing ever. It was the worst thing ever. I got my baby out though. Relief for some who rode out Hurricane Ida, brought to safety after being trapped by floodwaters. I was mopping and then it just progressively got worse till it was ankles, knees, almost chest levels. So we just put the dogs on the counters and then we climbed into the attic. The storm has left nearly half of Louisiana in the dark. Crews now working to restore power to more than a million homes. Almost the entire southeastern port part of our state is without power. But power isn't the only concern. Never lost, have a major loss like this. Many homeowners spent the day surveying what's left and what's lost. This is unreal. This is nothing I've ever seen before. The storm may be over in Louisiana, but it will be a long road to recovery. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News, New Orleans.
And tonight, Virginians are answering the call to offer aid to those dealing with the effects of Ida. From power restoration to search and rescue and general disaster relief, local crews are joining forces to help. Now at 11, Prince Solomon is live in Richmond with that part of our team coverage. And Brent, you had the chance to catch up with a Red Cross volunteer. I sure did, Makia, and turns out he's no stranger to hurricanes. This is the second one he's actually responded to, and he's one of many lending a helping hand. Like I said, I tried to pack for whatever. Everett Taylor has his bags ready to go. Now he's ready to hit the friendly skies. He's bracing for what he's about to see. From what I've seen on the news, it, it, it looks horrible. Images from storm-ravaged areas continue to pour in, revealing the catastrophe, then Hurricane Ida left behind. When you see hundreds of people coming in with pretty much everything they own because they've been wiped out, I mean, it's heartbreaking. But Taylor jumps at the opportunity to oh, offer God. relief. He's one of several local Red Cross volunteers who are headed to storm-impacted areas. And his job is to assess all of the damage. I just want to help as many people as I can, do whatever I can to make things more comfortable for the people that have been displaced. He's not alone. Take a look at Dominion Energy crews preparing to do their part. 200 crews from Virginia and South Carolina now headed to Louisiana as well. I think that's getting a disturbing discovery. Human remains found in a backpack that a woman apparently left in a dumpster. This is the woman in question. Police believe she left that backpack behind a store in the 11,000 block of Hall Street Road. An employee checked the backpack, saw what appeared to be blood, and called police. And now, investigators want to know who this woman is. They believe she or someone else may be in need of medical attention tonight. If you recognize her, please call Chesterfield Police at number 748-1251. Well, right now, Richmond police are asking for help in a deadly shooting. Police were called to the 1300 block of Oakwood Avenue. This was around 9 for a person down. Once on scene, they found a man dead with a gunshot wound. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. New pictures tonight. This is the last U.S. soldier to board the last plane in Kabul, effectively ending the 20-year war in Afghanistan. He's been identified as Major General Chris Donahue, commander of the U.S. Army 82nd Airborne Division. And tonight we have learned while the soldiers are out, as many or more than 100 U.S. citizens do remain in that country. Now at 11, Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel reports on what happens next. The United States ended its 20-year war in Afghanistan today with the conclusion of the largest non-combatant airlift in American history. I'm here to announce the completion of our withdrawal from Afghanistan and the end of the military mission. 123,000 people flown out of the now Taliban-controlled country. The Taliban firing barrages of celebratory gunfire after the last aircraft departed. But not all Americans were able to get out. The citizens that were not brought out number in the low, very low hundreds. Uh, I believe that we're going to work, we're going to be able to get those people out. It's been two decades of military deployments. 2,461 Americans killed. 1,144 NATO allies killed. More than 48,000 Afghans killed. 300,000 Afghan soldiers trained only to collapse when confronted. About a trillion dollars spent and more to come to care for the wounded. Afghanistan handed back to the very same Islamic fundamentalists the United States drove from power just weeks after 9-11. A generation of Afghans raised with expectations of freedom and fundamental rights under an umbrella of American protection. It all ended today. ISIS taking parting shots, hoping to etch their dark name in history, firing rockets at the airport to no effect. The U.S. firing back, the military says, against an ISIS car bomb. Afghans say 10 civilians were killed. A war once called Operation Enduring Freedom, proving to be neither enduring nor leaving a legacy of freedom. Americans still in Kabul are being advised to lay low, shelter in place, as diplomatic efforts will continue to evacuate them through the civilian airport 
once it reopens, but it's unclear when that will happen. Richard Engel, NBC News, Doha. And in an announcement this evening, the president thanked the American military and said he will address the American people tomorrow afternoon. Well, turning to our coronavirus coverage now in Virginia, here's a look at the numbers. More than 8,000 cases in the past three days, including nearly 2,300 today. We're now averaging more than 3,100 new infections every day. Those numbers have pushed the positivity rate above 10 percent, now at 10.1 percent. And in Richmond, rising Delta variant cases are prompting concerns now for parents as the start of the school year is just over a week away. The option for virtual learning is full. Now the district is working to make sure it's safe to welcome back its 22,000 students. RPS says it does plan to stay on top of any COVID cases, working with the health department to establish contact tracing protocols. New HVAC systems are also in place there. School employees are under a vaccine mandate. In Chesterfield, the efforts to attract more bus drivers amid a big-time shortage comes in the form of increased pay. Today, the district announced they will increase starting pay. Our starting bus driver pay, which was $17.21, will now be $20.21. We know this is a national issue, uh, but uh, we cannot uh, just sit back and say, you know, everyone's having the same problem. And it's not just that one hike. Those who sign on also get a $3,000 bonus. The announcement comes as the district works to fill at least 100 vacant bus driver positions. 75 to 80 bus driver applications came in just last week, and 33 people started their three-week training process. School leaders do say it will take several months to fill all of the positions. Well, so ahead, a first-of-its-kind vaccine mandate set to be put in place in Virginia. Why Fairfax County is requiring all student-athletes be fully vaccinated or sit out. Plus, what counties could be next. And the number of people forced from their homes increasing as the Caldor fire continues to burn out of control. What we're learning tonight from officials at the center of it all. And watching the remnants of Ida and what that could lead to our forecast for Wednesday. I'll walk you through the latest hour by hour coming up after the break. If there's ever a summer to get away, this is it. And the Hyundai Getaway Sales.